in this special broadcast i am delighted to welcome admiral hari kumar india's navy chief and i am on uh, one of uh, the navy's uh, showpiece uh, ships and uh, a new ship in fact ins vishakhapatnam uh, a brand new ship a destroyer uh, which uh, has been built completely indigenously and uh, something that uh, india needs to be proud of uh, given the indigenization that uh, the indian navy does and we are speaking to him on eve of uh, the navy day which is on uh, 4th december so thank you for this opportunity uh, admiral and uh, thank you for uh, taking out time to meet us and uh, speak to us in detail here so it's a pleasure to come and meet you and uh, you know sort of uh, tell you what the navy or the navy does thank you more more people to know about what uh, the navy does of course we need to have more uh, awareness about the maritime issues and the navy and you are leading the charge uh, about this uh as we go along as we see um what we can actually uh, think of is my first question is about uh, the navy's focus on indigenization the navy is known among the three armed forces to be leader in indigenization in uh, atmanirbharta give me a sense of uh, what exactly are your focus areas right now for indigenization well firstly let me tell you that we have given a commitment to our uh, leadership mm-hmm. that indian navy will be a mm-hmm. atmanirbhar force by 2047 oh wow so okay when uh, mm. we celebrate 100 years of our independence at right. the time the navy will be 100% indigenous that mm-hmm. is the aim. okay so we are working towards that mm-hmm. uh, you are aware of the ships uh, submarines and uh, they are, uh, are being uh, built in india now right this journey has started quite some time back in 1960s right since then you know we started with small patrol boats yes and then moved on to bigger and bigger ships destroyers you know calvary class submarines and now of course we have the uh, aircraft carrier which is commissioned last september that's right so it's a uh, you know we have really evolved and we are very glad that you know 75% of our uh, you know the, the of uh, say grand was uh, indigenous yes so uh, the uh, we are uh, we are there as far as you know the, the, the among the three components of uh, building yes the uh, float we are somewhere around 95% uh, bow we are somewhere around 65% or so we need to pick uh, the, uh, the uh, prime movers basically the diesel engines caster sure. bearings and so mm. uh, and the focus area really is on the fight component so we are somewhere on 50 55% now where the we have the uh, uh, missiles and uh, missile systems and all being made here but we need to make you know radars uh, you know better sonars and uh, torpedoes and things so focus on that so that the uh, fight component where you know weapon sensors uh, systems uh, uh, that is the part which we are uh, focusing on that's right we are quite confident that we should be involved to fight, fight six years time we will be able to do that oh that's good to know because uh, i remember you saying uh, at one of the seminars that uh, navy's focus not is just about indigenization but also encouraging indian industry uh, yeah. which you did and cochin shipyard did the uh, yeah. the aircraft carrier along with it i think uh, there was such a ecosystem that was created yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so uh, you know like the government of india had, uh, and the mod had the idex scheme which was uh, initiated some time back right so we have now uh, worked along with them and we have created this uh, nio the uh, naval uh, innovation indigenization organization right along with it the tdac technology development and acceleration cell uh, and uh, uh, we had the first swavalamban seminar last year which was inaugurated by honorable prime minister yes. and uh, 75 challenges were released that time to the industry uh, the response was overwhelming in the sense uh, 1180 not companies the respondent out of which we shortlisted them to about you know 300 plus and under then 20 odd contracts are already signed products have been developed and this year when we had the swavalamban seminar yes uh, we had products which are already uh, either uh, undergoing trials or uh, some uh, three products have already been inducted into service and it's you know great promise and now more challenges have also been given to them so we are and holding the industry especially the msme startups and right uh through the uh, technology development fund our idex prime so with the the smaller cases get about uh, 1 crore plus and the 1.5 crore then the larger ones get about 10 crores this is that's it yeah. so uh, we, are, we are fully involved as a user and uh, to help them to develop. in developing yeah, and yeah, designing yeah, and yeah, whatever so you've done them to you know go on a tangent and give us something which you don't which <laughs> exactly yeah. so i think that interaction is increased yeah. which is i think uh, a great thing for uh, industry industry as well as for the forces yeah. 
to have more interaction, frequent interaction, and uh, then come up with a design or a use product. I mean, a product for use uh, in the navy. Uh, one question on uh, indigenization again uh, about uh, so what are the weak areas here? You mentioned the flight, uh, but what about radars? What about torpedoes? Uh, what about uh, even um, sensors? Uh, where are we on that? Yeah, so that is actually the what I was talking about with the flight component because to right. fight, you know, you need sensors, weapons, and right. uh, the uh, decision support metric systems right. and the uh, combat management systems and all that. So we have moved fairly ahead in combat management systems. Now, with what we are looking at is one is uh, indigenous development of the weapons. So weapons are being developed, whether it's for the aircraft or for the uh, submarine or for the ship, or are getting developed. And so uh, one challenge is integration into the existing system. So exactly. where we don't have a source code, etc. So yeah. we're working with the OEMs to see whether you can help us in in uh, in meshing it into the existing system. All right. Uh, there's no problem with the ab initio, you know, new uh, platforms where we can, you know, sure. uh, fit in us. And at the same time, you know, they may be, uh, while we say, uh, uh, you know, uh, the aim is to make 100%, but the thrust should be on uh, on a technology which is uh, cutting it and which is a deniable technology that we should have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What is commercially off the shelf available, those obviously can always be sourced uh, from outside. Yeah. So that is the mm -hmm. focus we have on uh, in uh, uh, doing this. So uh, even in aviation side, mm -hmm. uh, we are working uh, like uh, we are aware of the Tejas uh, That's SA Navy. It. Yes. Uh, SA Navy was a uh, uh, was a prototype project actually for you know. Getting to know what are the challenges when you do a, a you know, a, a, when you have a platform developed for aviation, uh, or for uh, naval aviation, that's right? For uh, launching from a ship and recovering on a ship, that's right. So it is quite unique and different from sure. what you do a show. Yeah. So all that, a uh, lot of data points have been uh, collected, and you know, we've got a very good experience on, uh, I mean, uh, information on that. Right. So now the uh, we are quite confident that mm -hmm. we'll be able to develop a suitable fighter for the uh, navy. So we are looking at the twin engine deck based fighter. Right. So we have moved the case for it. You now the basic uh, uh, wars have been uh, worked out, mm -hmm. and we are hopeful that uh, you know the government will uh, you know uh, And then Indian company or uh, Indian uh, made in India. Uh, made in India. And yeah. We expect the prototype by about 2032, and uh, uh, then uh, maybe around 2030 or so, and maybe another two, three years we should get the the first uh, production aircraft. Which is good because you've got a uh, aircraft carrier and now you need yeah, uh, the yeah. flight component on yeah. that uh, basically. So uh, we were talking about aircraft carrier and Vikrant has been a major milestone in that sense. Uh, you are of course looking for LCA Navy um, and um, before that how are you going to make up for uh, what you need uh, as a flight component or a, uh, you know aircraft on deck uh, the Vikrant. So what are the is, plans for that? Yeah, so that is why uh, uh, we have, you know, uh, the um, uh, case which you have moved for yes. the uh, interim uh, uh, availability of aircraft. So we have moved the case for the Rafal, 26 Rafals are being uh, procured. Yeah. So the government is, uh, you know, has uh, uh, <laughs> agreed to the proposal and uh, the BSA has cleared it. Right. So uh, this uh, this will meet the requirement for uh, one carrier. Sure. Actually, you know, yeah, Vikram. exactly. And uh, we, you know, uh, it will, uh, uh, and this uh, also will have an indigenous component in the sense uh, it will facilitate uh, MRO, it will facilitate uh, the supply chain for radars, sure. the uh, radar and the EW uh, system. Right. But then the engine overall also, uh, mm -hmm. the M88 engine, you know, mm -hmm. they will set up something here in India. Correct. The airframe uh -huh. uh, also will get uh, manufactured, uh, you know, in India part of it. Right. So uh, there is a good component of uh, indigenization which will also happen along with the Air Force, uh, you know, sure. uh, uh, Rafals. Mm -hmm. So uh, so this is one part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when you look at the time frames, you know, from the time of signing contract, it will take about 36 months. So mm -hmm. for the first aircraft to come, and it involves trial because this has been proven on the sure. aircraft carrier. Uh -huh. So. Uh, uh, it will, um, while our shore based test facility is almost similar, mm. uh, but we have to, you know, prove it on the carrier. So we don't anticipate much of a problem. Mm -hmm. with that. So uh, essentially by 2026 or 27, mm. uh, I know it should be with us. Oh, that's uh, that's great uh, yeah. news. Yeah. So that will cover this interim period of mm. you know when we are looking at getting the uh, the TBF developed, mm. and then uh, uh, by the time the TBF starts coming in, you will find that the Mik 29s will get phased out. Yeah. So we'll have then indigenous aircraft and. So I recently read that you are also uh, contemplating a second IAC. 
uh, our planning a second IC. Yeah. What is the news on that? Yeah, so the, uh, we have moved a case uh, for the, uh, the, the second, uh, the, the third aircraft carrier, so to say. Oh. The uh, second one, uh, indigenously to uh, well. Right. So, uh, the uh, wonder is that uh, we have now got the ability to make a you know aircraft carrier. Mm -hmm. There's always been a felt need for having you know three aircraft carriers, uh, and we just have to look around. China is building 10, mm -hmm. you know, other countries have so all got, you know, uh, adequate number of carriers and we yes. have a very vast area. Right. The, or uh, the uh, IOR itself is very vast and then if you look at Indo-Pacific, that is even wider. Correct. So, uh, the idea is to have at least uh, two operational carrier battle group. Mm -hmm. so for that, you will require, you know, three carriers because uh, the, the carriers have long gestational periods once you go into, you know, major overall. Yeah. So, with that, uh, you know, we have uh, both the case, it is, uh, uh, you know, under consideration. The Kuchin shipyard has now got, you know, adequate experience. They have, you know, built this. It's so world-class, I would say. Sure. And it's a proof to our uh, ability, our, uh, you know, um, uh, our designers. And uh, we had got the design. Only the design waiting was done and there was no correction. Uh, you know, no amendment that was... Which is required. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great thing. Mm. So, uh, many people have asked me, you know, why are you not looking for a bigger aircraft carrier and things like that. Right now, we feel that this, uh, we must uh, tap the expertise that is available mm. and the capability that is there to you know, build it. And secondly, what you need to is also, uh, you know, this is the age of drones and, uh, you know, new uh, niche technology. So, why not, you know, look at um, that sort of, you know, unmanned aircraft also to team with the manned aircraft. So, that okay. probably we may be able to generate, you know, uh, in similar type of capability as a bigger aircraft More carrier. firepower this, uh, in uh, that, with, uh, with this, this small, I mean, with this third yeah. aircraft yeah. carrier when you bring so it. That so, that's interesting because you're saying manned as well as yeah. unmanned can be combined there on that uh, deck. But talking about uh, building capabilities, one of the uh, weaknesses and uh, one of the shortcomings that you have also highlighted earlier is about uh, submarine arm. Uh, where are we on uh, enhancing or uh, replenishing uh, our submarine arm? See, currently we have uh, 16 submarines. Right. Of course, some of them are, you know, a little old, uh, mm. but uh, there are, we, we, we've got a, uh, 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 the availability is, uh, is reasonably good. Mm -hmm. And now the new Scorpions, uh, six Scorpions which you have inducted, the sixth one is going to get commissioned, you know, uh, at the end of this uh, year or the early next year. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we are, uh, going ahead as per the uh, 1999 approved uh, 30 year sub submarine building program, correct, which anticipates that we will have 24 you know submarines, right. So, there is a plan for that, sure. Yes, it has got delayed a little bit, yes, uh, because of various reasons, uh, you know, shipyard capacity and you know, things like that. Mm. And uh, but now it is it's on track, so it may get a little delayed. But the government has now approved the uh, you know, uh, and the, the you know, three repeat order for the scorpions, so that is on. Mm. So, if India is in uh, in the works, so right. India. The RFPs that got delayed because they, the uh, it's a model where we look at a strategic partnership. Sure. Uh, so what was envisaged in the uh, submarine building plan was that we do it in two phases. In the first phase, you have a strategic partner so that right. you know technology etc is uh, transferred and we get to know how it is manufactured. Sure. And the second phase will be continuously uh, it will be completely indigenous. Correct. So this is the first part of the 75 India. So that is uh, now we've got all the uh, quotes and uh, you know the. the Bids have been submitted. Have been given. Mm. So it is under process. Right. And uh, simultaneously, we are also looking at the indigenous uh, the design and development. Sure. So that process is also you know moving. So oh. that is 76. 76. <laughs> so I see. It's a new project. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind but of that will have a little lead time. So right. Based upon whatever you have learned so far. Right. Have, so if you ask me, uh, the uh, the uh, availability of sufferings is good. And uh, it will meet our requirements as to if we follow us to this plan. And uh, we have enough companies or enough expertise uh, within India to do submarines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have. We have enough. Uh, uh, there is a good ecosystem, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the the nuclear submarine project. So we have, you know, yeah. adequate right. expertise available to the country. Correct. And the technology is the same. If it is a pump, you know, if you develop a higher level pump, you can use it it's in same. whichever. You can even use it on surface ship. Right. So similarly, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a whole lot of equipment has been developed, control mm -hmm. systems, uh, you know, valves, uh, uh, pumps and uh, sensors yes, and a whole lot of things. Yeah. They can all be used in you know uh, different applications. Correct. So, uh, before I get into more strategic issues, Indo-Pacific, Indian Ocean, all that, uh, one uh, aspect uh, which uh, was also being talked about was helicopters. Uh, you need uh, more helicopters on board ships. Uh, wh what is that program and where is it going uh, at the moment? So, uh, the uh, we are looking at uh, the uh, uh, the ALH, we got inducted recently that Mark 3. 
uh, we are by and large happy with it and uh, we have been able to improve, uh, uh, you know, effect improvements to it. So one of the challenges with ALH what we faced has been the late folding. Okay. So which is also getting resolved. Uh, they have, uh, HAL has been very, uh, very progressive and cooperative. So that work is also going to happen right. uh, thereafter. So we'll see more and more, uh, you know, uh, embarked operations for a longer period of time. Mm. Right now it is limited for, uh, you know, because of the hangar edge issue. Sure. But uh, otherwise, uh, it's, a, it's a good platform. So we are now looking at the uh, 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 multi-role helicopters which is deck base right so the the challenge is our numbers are not as big as the army and the air force sure and uh, you know if you develop a helicopter first for land operation and then it's what difficult to make it for, <laughs> you know make it uh, work exactly. on the ship on the ship yeah so uh, what is suggested is you make something for the ship and then it is easier to you know uh, sort of modify uh, it for land, for land. So, okay that is what discussion we've been having with them. I see. But uh, this is being progressed. So we are quite hopeful that uh, you know, we will uh, be doing it all. That's good to know because yeah. I think uh, as more and more uh, responsibility comes in Indian yeah. Navy's way, I think you'll need more helicopters yeah, yeah. apart from ships and submarines, of course. So we were talking about uh, helicopters. Um, also, I wanted to know a little bit more about the underwater domain awareness uh, and uh, I think the future technologies, uh, unmanned uh, UAVs, underwater. Uh, what is the progress there? Are we, uh, is, is DRDO or any other companies looking at it? Is Navy asking for it? Yeah, so what we did was we have taken out the unmanned uh, roadmap. Right. So that roadmap has been approved by the MOD, it was released by Honorable uh, Rekhamathri in, uh, 20, in 2021. Hmm. And uh, since then uh, we have been uh, you know, moving ahead on. So the idea was to give uh, you know, some direction to the industry. So they work in the yeah exactly yeah, what correct. we want. Mm. So we have talked of you know uh, unmanned uh, aerial vehicles, unmanned surface vehicles, unmanned underwater vehicles. Right. Now, underwater vehicles there are different types. You know you need uh, you know ones with limited endurance, medium endurance, you know, longer sure. endurance, and so on. And uh, some with you know sensor, some with you know uh, uh, weapon delivery capability and things. So uh, some you know these uh, uh, requirements are generally given, been given as a challenge. Right. So work is happening. DRD is doing some work, and we also having work by private uh, you know partners. A lot of people have you know come forward with their own proposals. Uh, so more to propose in sure. direction. We have examined some of them. Some are feasible, some are not feasible. So we have been uh, you know uh, taking it for right. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, so we are moving in the direction, and of course, what I said is that Moom T or the manned unmanned teaming is what we we I have look at. We have been operating uh, UAVs for some time sure. since the, the uh, searchers and right. the, uh, around. Around the last three years, we've been operating the predators on right. uh, these. Mm. So there is an adequate understanding of you know the capabilities and limitations of these uh, things. So we are working on that. We have set up unmanned squadron now. Okay. Uh, you know, at Karwar, and mm -hmm. you know, so uh, we hope to integrate it well with our normal business operations of the big. Sure. So, uh, talking about uh, predators, you have two of them on lease, but now you have already moved a case for buying them. Yeah. Uh, at what stage is that proposal now? Because there was a big announcement uh, by the leaders of US yeah. and India. Yeah. yeah. So, where is it now? So, we have given the, the, the LOR is gone, so now they have to come back with the mm -hmm. uh, with the details of it, mm -hmm. which is awaiting that. Uh, and then there will be some uh, in, uh, you know, discussions and progress. The, uh, and the pricing yeah. and all that will happen. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what has been your experience both in, with respect to PHIs and um, uh, the, the predators that you have used for the past 2-3 uh, years now? So, uh, uh, the PHI actually is an anti-submarine uh, yeah. weapon actually. <laughs> exactly. Which we normally mistake it as just a, a surveillance. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. we, it, is, it can deliver you know, heavyweight you know, um, uh, 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 ordnance. Yeah. So, that is a Plus, it got some boys, and it's got uh, it's got a particular ability to hunt submarine, right? Which is not there in the case of a predator. Right. predator right. You know, um, in the, the right now the version we have, it's a surveillance, right? So it can also be weaponized. Yes. But then it will not have the uh, ability to the same amount of ordnance as a. Uh, sure. So there is a vast difference between the correct. Mm -hmm. What capability? Sure. Each brings some different capabilities. Sure. To mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we have uh, going ahead for the 31 uh, drones you are aware of. That's right. drones you are yes. aware of. And out of which 15 are for the Navy and 16 for the Air Force and right. the Army. Yes. Uh, so we uh, this will definitely add on to the uh, effort to generate MDA by keeping the Indian Ocean region under yeah. surveillance. Correct. To know because it's our job to know what is happening there. Yes. Who's the who's they you know who's doing what. Right. No. So that is the whole aim of uh, the exercise. So uh, right now, since we don't have so many of them, we use the other you know other like means yeah. yeah exactly yeah. so i think you've used them in multi role uh, yeah. i think domain that way 
let me now uh, switch to a little more broader topics rather than just acquisitions or uh, capability building. Uh, the other day at the um, IPRD, uh, you spoke about uh, Chinese behavior in the uh, on high seas. Uh, what is the worry? Are they aggressive? Are they not rules? I mean, they don't follow rules. So what what is it that you were trying to convey that time? No, what uh, we uh, see, what is happening in the South China Sea, the interaction with the uh, with, with the neighboring countries, and right. what we come to know of, uh, sort of, you know, uh, uh, they're a little bit more uh, aggressive when the smaller countries, smaller navy, smaller coast guards, and right. so on in the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, you know, uh, disputed claims, and uh, it's a, a lot of claims are there between sure. the countries. A lot of contests yeah, there. So yeah. There is a mm -hmm. you know contest there. So mm -hmm. that that is you know, and the answer is basically to uh, stick to a rules based order. Sure. So we have the UNCLOS, uh, mm -hmm. which is very clear, and it is, it, everybody is signatory to that. Absolutely. So once you are signatory to that, you have to abide by it. Well, and if you go for arbitration and then the arbitrator, the arbitration court gives a decision, then you have to stick by it. Correct. You can't say, no, I won't, no, if it's not in your favor, then you can't. Yes. Uh -huh. So those are the, uh, you know, the issues which are there. And, uh, you know, there are, uh, you know, um, other issues like uh, IUU fishing and, uh, you know, poaching and things like that, which in our area we keep under surveillance. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, researchers and so also operating, you know, trying to gather data of the underwater, you know, domain, things like that. So uh, it's our job to keep a uh, you know close watch on what is happening there and you know uh, see that our interests are uh, protected. protected. Yeah, Indian Ocean region is our main area of interest, and of course in the larger Indo-Pacific. In that respect, uh, a lot of uh, mission-based deployments used to take place earlier. Now you're sending ship visits and you know long-distance uh, ships. So uh, what is the Navy's plan for uh, more and more exercises? I mean, you do Malabar, I know multi-nation. But even bilaterally, lots of exercises are happening with the other navies. Yeah, yeah that's true. So we mm. do like, uh, see the whole idea is, you know, engagement. Right. So when you say, you know, I use that acronym TIDES, that yeah. is T-I-D-E-S. So mm -hmm. T is trust. Mm. And that trust comes through the rest of it. That oh. is I is for interoperability, right. T is for domain awareness, mm. uh, E is for, uh, you know, engagements. Right. And this is the security. Yes. So when you when you have all the other four, then, you know, you get, you know, the, the trust, everything, and then you arrive at uh, security. Sure. So for that we engage with the uh, regional, you know, uh, navies. Uh, navies and coast guard who are the, uh, you know, friendly foreign countries right. in the region. We help them in uh, capability development and uh, capacity building, then uh, training mm -hmm. and uh, regular exercises. You know, either they come for training here or we send training teams. So depending upon the requirements. So. Uh, there is a lot of understanding, one army, and trust is something which cannot happen overnight. You know, right. it has to, you cannot be searched mm -hmm. in the sense. So you have to develop it over a period of time, so, right. which is what we have been, you know, functionally working at it. Mm -hmm. And we are guided by uh, Sagar, of course, security and those all in the region, which is the mm -hmm. prime minister's, uh, or sure. the prime minister's, uh, you know, uh, vision. Right. So that we taken it as a doctrine, and we are working on that. And also, uh, like on the external affairs minister said that you know, India doesn't want to grow by it you know, on its own. Wants so, to take uh, people uh, along. Yeah, yeah. So that is the message we convey, and we have been interacting with them, you know, in many ways. Right. Uh, in our own way, we have been uh, uh, having uh, things like uh, IONS, uh, which has been a brainchild of the Navy, right. which is now, you know, yes, large become, from yeah. 25 countries and eight observers. Correct. We have the uh, uh, War Maritime Conclave, 12 uh, countries that participated. Mm. Villain, uh, which is held upcoming now. Yeah. Upcoming one. Yeah. Last year we had, last time we had, we had 40 countries participating, right. 40 navies participating. Yeah. So all this is an attempt to, you know, tell them that, uh, you know, we uh, want to work along with you, you know, have trust. And uh, so what are we you know, trying to be, you know, do with the, uh, by being the, uh, being mission deployed? Our ships have the ability to switch from whatever roles. So like we have basically four roles, which is combat, you know, diplomatic, benign, constabulary. Sure. So depending on the requirement, a ship which is deployed in a fully operational ship can switch to any role. You know, if there's a disaster relief, you can straight away go for that. If there's a reaction to come in, you can go for that. That's right. So that is the whole idea of mission deployment. So that they are power deployed. And Flexibility is yeah. inbuilt. Yeah, and mm. is, you know, it doesn't have to. Now uh, he's already there at the scene of action, so something can happen immediately. Sure. So we try to be the first responder, then by generating trust, we try to be a preferred security partner. Right. And also we try to generate, you know, something called the collective maritime competence in the region. Sure. So that is, uh, we again work on the, you know, the five S's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that someone, uh, Samvat, Shanti, Samrithi and, uh, you know, Sahyog. Right. So with these uh, five, mm. we sort of say that, you know, irrespective of the size of your Navy or Guard, 
uh, you have you know you have the same place at the table right and uh, because everybody can bring something or the other of you know, course you're saying either it is you know your experience or your knowledge local knowledge or you know uh, uh, capability so they all bring something to the table and then we you know take it for so yeah. that is the uh, you know no i can see that because even smaller island countries yeah. in the indian ocean uh, i think uh, are our partners in in yeah. many ways seychelles mauritius yes, uh, all that so even madagascar i think yeah. uh, you have a thing and i think that way navy has really spread its wings uh, of late yeah. in the past 5 6 years yeah, we actually work as you know along with the mea yes the progress <laughs> whatever the uh, the uh, directions of the leadership correct that is, the whole. And that is how uh, coming to hr policies in the navy and i think uh, but before that i want to we are in mumbai yeah. uh, exactly 15 years ago this city saw ma- massive um, attack and terrorist attack since then i think there has been a lot of progress in uh, maritime security uh, getting our capabilities uh, enhanced all that uh when you look back uh, where are we in terms of security securing our shores so in terms of coastal security much has changed it is completely different from what it was you know in uh, in, in in that time so uh, 2611 i would say yeah. since then much has changed uh, the uh, both the navy as well as the coast guard have been strengthened in terms of uh, for coastal security purposes right so the we have coastal radar chains uh, we have now you know both um, coastal you know patrol vessels uh, we uh, that power has been massively augmented for this there is better networking with the uh, the the coastal uh, police stations yes uh, so there is the uh, the coastal police then the coast guard the navy so we are all you know uh, working the three together. layers yeah, kind of thing yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. so mm-hmm. and we do regular exercises there sagar, sagar gavach series of exercises which is l1 to quarter then there is the national level exercise called sea vigil which yes. is conducted you know every all right here so uh, all this has one fruit now and people uh, we are trying to uh, encourage this uh, you know uh, awareness that you need to be more uh, alert to <laughs> this thing but there is a challenge because there are plenty of boats sure the uh, we are trying to get transport those put on fishing boats it's a, it's a bit of a challenge because we have more than four lakh fishing boats exactly boat. and uh, also uh, the uh, you know uh, the fish landing sites uh, as we you know uh, distribute yeah. yeah so uh, Uh, the no, the much progress has been made but if you ask me is it cool cool you know there is a lot more work that needs to be done and security can never be full never be full and they have to be successful yeah, only yeah, once yeah, yeah. you have to be alert right and uh, we are at it uh, you know we uh, uh, the uh, continuously monitor very closely trying to improve the uh, uh, you know maritime uh, domain awareness so now the national md has also been approved sure. the national maritime domain awareness mm. uh, which will uh, come up in the ifc iwr at sure. um, you know as a as a big so lots of uh, you know uh, capabilities being built up in then that's good to know so uh, i want to talk to you a little bit about this new trend uh, of the three armed forces taking their respective uh, navy day army day air force day out of delhi what is the significance of this wow what is the purpose of it and uh, where are you taking the navy day this time so uh, you're right because you know over the last uh, you know so many uh, years we've yeah. always been having this function in delhi right so what is happening what used to happen was that the same people used to come every year yeah and uh, the really new to be you know not much uh, awareness being spread to the, uh, the rest of the country, country. Yeah. yeah so therefore uh, it was felt that you know this needs to be done at various places so sure. that the, the local people you know or the countrymen yeah. uh, come to know that what is it that the services do exactly yeah so uh, therefore we have shifted last year we had done it in vishakhapatnam correct so this year we said we will do it at another uh, completely different place we are doing it at sindhudur now what is the significance of sindhudur because sindhudur was the place where uh, chatrapati shivaji maharaj you know started his uh, you know uh, the uh, naval uh, operations sure so he built the fort there and he moved so correct. we wanted to uh, you know honor and uh, honor him and uh, sort of recognize that he was in a sense uh, for father of the with the in the navy in that navy sense, in that sense. and uh, uh, if you remember last year we had changed the naval ensign sure so in the naval ensign if you see there is a octagon yeah and that octagon mm. is taken from the rajmutra of uh, chatrapati yes, shivaji maharaj of course yeah when his raj abhishek yeah, was yeah, done yeah, yeah. so <laughs> that is how that uh, you know the, the, our linkage with uh, our the uh, uh you you say brass of pigar yes uh, that is a link so kanoji angre was yeah. uh, also you know part of that legacy and i in fact uh, you are confirming what i heard when i was 
on a tour to uh, Konkan uh, and uh, our uh, ancestral village is uh, nearby, oh, is near Sindhudurg. So you should have been. So, in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I never stayed in that village. I mean, our uh, Kuldev, uh, as you know, family deity is there. So when we went there, people said, "Oh, there's going to be a big function here. The you know, the Navy Day is going to happen here." So I'm glad that you're confirming that. But coming to a more serious topic of uh, HR management, you you inducted women yeah. uh, in the Indian Navy. Agni Veers have come in. What has been the challenge to induct Agni Veers? There is no challenge. No challenge. No challenge. In fact, uh, we find we get we are getting better material. Okay. We had a requirement of, the, for example, in the last year for the first batch, we wanted uh, 3,500. We had vacancies. Mm -hmm. We had uh, 10 lakh 80,000 applications. Wow. Uh, roughly, mm -hmm. out of which about 80,000 were women. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I had said uh, we are not going to distinguish between uh, male and uh, female. Uh, it is only we are going to be, we are a, we have adopted a mm -hmm. uh, stance of being a gender neutral force. Right. Uh, it'll be only competence, capability, right. and your ability to deliver. Okay. You know, so uh, they are only criteria on which we base uh, sure. uh, this thing. And therefore, equal opportunities. If you are, and there is nothing which is uh, banned for in anyone right. on the basis of uh, gender. Hmm. So somebody wants to go to submarine, that is also possible. I see. But it's a it's a, it's a gradual you process. You have to volunteer and you have to you know go through screening and various tests. So if you are able to meet the uh, requirements, then why not? Hmm. So we found very good uh, material coming in, highly motivated, uh -huh. uh, better qualified, right. tech savvy, uh -huh. and uh, they and every one of them wants hmm. to be in the 25% ah, to, to retain, <laughs> to yeah. continue and uh, yeah. for the women activists when I spoke to them you know, uh -huh. they were saying everyone wants to become an officer uh -huh. and uh, they're very confident and so there are opportunities to become yeah, officer yeah, definitely they okay. always, uh, you know, apply and, uh, you know, and so do you have to uh, do you, uh, did you have to uh, modify your ship's layout and all that for uh, women? Not, not really not really much yes some of the new construction ships they have done some little bit of modification right. uh, but in my opinion there is not really much that is required mm. because we do have you know accommodation Toilets, etc. Nearby, so all that is required. We earmark a certain sure. you know, uh, segment segment for them, mm. and the others don't go to that place. That's all. So it's a you know, and uh, it's a mindset. We have to just come out of the mindset and see. Sure, give fair opportunity to everyone, which is I think uh, what Navy has done in a big way. So congratulations on that, and thank you very much for your time. Okay. This you. was wonderful, uh, a complete, detailed insight into what we have done, what you, what Navy has done and is doing, and thank you for this opportunity to go be on one of your frontline ships here. It's, it's yeah, one of your pride. Yeah, it's, a, it's built in India. <laughs> it's built in India. Made in India, made for India. Made for India. Yeah. Exactly. And I think uh, that way Indian Navy is an envy of many navies because the capability that has been built indigenously is not available to many other countries yeah. uh, except for the uh, very developed ones. So, congratulations on that and uh, happy Navy Day to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.